So here we are inside the St Andrew's organ. As I said, it's a very narrow access stairway which we have here. It comes up through the side of the organ. The, the side panel has to be removed for access. And you can see here the um, pedal board on, uh, which goes along the side of the instrument on both sides. And um, facing to, uh, well, at the rear of the instrument, we have the sh swell shutters, which are activated using the original trigger swell pedal mechanism. And I'll just ask John to activate that pedal with his foot now. And you can see the, the shades close, open and close, using the trigger lever, which is located to the far right hand side of the pedal board. And uh, inside here, we have the swell division of the organ. And at the very front of the chamber, we have the wonderful Ovo stop, which is one of the most colorful stops on the organ. It adds tremendous character. And as you can see, the, uh, the wind chest is arranged with the typical C side, C sharp side arrangement. So the pipes are arranged in, um, in ascending tones uh, towards the middle. And you can see that the trebles of the oboe are incredibly small pipes and very difficult to tune and rather prone to going out of tune compared to the flues. The next rank you can see here is the, is the uh, swell four-foot gems horn. And if I zoom in here, you can see these pipes are essentially in original condition as Speechley and Ingram built them in 1873 and they are cone-tuned, which is um, not overly common, especially for an instrument um, of this age. And it's been um, very carefully looked after by John Largaway and um, when Steve Laurie restored the instrument um, over, just over 20 years ago. Uh, next, we have the wonderful Lieblick Gedacht, which you can see is a stopped flute. And uh, because of the stopped flute, it is quite rich in harmonics. And it is a very soft sound, but very beautiful. And finally, towards the rear of the swell box here, we have the open diapason, which uh, is uh, the base pipes of the open diapason are stopped wood, but the, they've been voiced in such a way that you would hardly notice the difference. And then the trebles from uh, tenor C upwards are all metal pipes which you can see here. And uh, it is a very, very sweet, warm and perfectly balanced sound and is one of my favorite stops on the organ. So we'll uh, get into um, some minor tuning of a couple of notes that are out. This gives you a bit of a picture of the swell. And when I rotate around to my right towards the front of the instrument, on the right hand side here, we have the remainder of the pedal board on which is as I said along the perimeter of the organ going right down there and at the front of the organ which there's very little room to move we have the great division and as you can see these are the facade pipes which are visible from um, the church and most of the facade pipes are still played and they still speak and uh, all the winding uh, goes from the chests uh, out and is plumbed around and that was um, quite a difficult challenge to repair all of those during the restoration but it's been painstakingly and lovingly done and they do all speak which is wonderful and uh, next we have in the center here, the remainder of uh, the trebles for the open diapason on the grate, which I'll just get John to play a few notes. It's a lovely, warm sound. The open diapason on the grate, very strong sound. And 
the next rank you can see here is the Clarabelle flute, which is a, a, a beautiful sounding stop. You can see the um, bases of the Clarabelle flute are stopped wood, but um, from Tennessee upwards, it's an open flute, and you can see they're tuned with these uh, beautiful lead shades, which are um, curled and wound back to enable the tuning. And so the wooden pipes have a very different sound and character to the metal. So I'll just get John to play a couple of notes of the great Clarabelle flute. I do apologise if this video is a bit wobbly, but I'm standing on a very narrow walkway and holding a light as well. So the next rank which we can see here is the gamba, which is an imitative string rank. And you can see by the, the what we call the scale or the diameter of these pipes is very narrow, which makes it rich in harmonics and gives that stringy sound. Um, so I'll just ask John to play the gamba. certainly have some tuning to do there. Next we have uh, the uh, four foot flute which you can see here again is an open wooden stop with the, um, the lead shades over the top and we, uh, we also have the dulciana which um, is probably the quietest stop on the organ although the Lieblick Gedacht on the swell is quieter when the box is closed but the Dulciana is very quiet. It basically sounds like a very distant diapason sound. And towards the back of the wind chest on the grate here we have the four foot principle which is really the heartbeat of the organ and really adds tremendous colour and body to the sound and is the backbone of the principal chorus and um, you can see that these pipes have what we call tuning slides on them so uh, they can be tapped very gently up and down to alter the length of the pipe and thereby change the wavelength or the frequency of the sound and uh, I'll just get John to play a couple of couple of notes on the swell four foot I apologize that was the great four foot principle and then at the very back here of the of the um, the wind chest on the grate we have the mixture stop which um, is a little different to what you might expect from a mixture it's actually a two foot and two and two thirds together so it's a two rank mixture essentially but um, on many organs one would expect to see it as a two foot fifteenth and a two and two thirds twelfth uh, but here we actually have both of those stops together in the mixture and um, that certainly takes some some skill and careful listening to tune because you have um, the fifth or quint sound in that mixture so um, I might get John to play um, just chromatically up a few notes so there's no break back so called break back on these mixtures this mixture because it is a two foot and a two and two thirds it um, it ascends um, tonally all the way without any breakbacks like you might expect on mi uh, mixtures on larger organs. So um, John if you can just play chromatically the mixture on its own. So as you can hear it sounds rather curious on its own but if um, John now pulls out the four foot principle and the eight foot open diapason you'll hear that this um, mixture with the two foot and the two and two thirds adds um, tremendous character and brightness to the chorus. Thank you, John.
So there we have it, the wonderful 1873 Speechley and Ingram pipe organ at St Andrews and we are very privileged to have this instrument and uh, if I lean forward very carefully here looking between the facade pipes you can see John there at the console. <laughs> so um, I think uh, the organist has quite a good um, perception of the instrument. You, you are fairly close to the sound. Uh, it, the sound tends to go over your head, particularly um, with with some of the upper work. Uh, but once you get down in the church, it's it's quite remarkable how much the sound um, blends and you hear the balance. Uh, but having said that, it, you certainly get a very good impression of the instrument from the console. And uh, if I just put the light down here, this is essentially on the walkway where I'm standing. If I look down behind, you can see the original tracker action that has been wonderfully restored. So if I just get John to play um, a few notes on the swell, you'll see this tracker action, which is incredible. Every pipe uh, is sounded through mechanical linkages all the way from the console keyboard to the back of the instrument here to the swell chest. So there you have it and uh, we'll continue uh, with tuning. I hope you've enjoyed this video, this unique insight into the St. Andrew's organ. Thank you. Bye.